Real Sports Baseball was released for the Atari 2600 in 1982. Obviously, it's a baseball game. You can pick one or two players for a full nine-inning game. All the positions are accounted for. Pitcher, catcher, three basemen, shortstop, and three outfielders. First, the visuals. Everything's really blocky and plain, even by Atari standards. I know that there's not much more you can do besides a green background with a brown diamond, but they could have smoothed it out a little bit, maybe make the players look a little bit better. But all that can be overlooked if the game plays well, right? Well, let's see. First, the pitching. There are four pitches. To select the pitch you want, you have to move the joystick in one of four directions. Up for a fastball, left for a riser, right for a sinker, and down for an intentional ball. After your pitch is selected, hold down and press the fire button to pitch. Now one thing that sucks as the hitter is that you can't tell what's coming. Every pitch looks exactly the same. It's a straight line right over the plate, even the intentional ball. So really, it's just a rock-scissors-paper guessing game. Even weirder is the game variation where if a pitch is a ball, the batter can't hit it, even if your timing is perfect. The stranger still is that this variation is mandatory in a one-player game. With two players, it's optional. What kind of sense does that make? And the computer AI is a genius at the plate. It'll always know if you're throwing a ball, which is bullshit because you're completely in the dark as a human player as to what pitch is next. The intentional ball is the only pitch guaranteed to be a ball. The others fluctuate. So while it's realistic that the pitcher won't always be on with his location, what goddamn difference does it make which pitch you select when they all end up traveling the exact same way? To hit the ball, press the fire button and thrust the joystick in one of several directions for the desired result. Diagonal up and left sends it to left field, diagonal up and right sends it to right field, straight up is a bunt, diagonal down and left is a fly ball to left, diagonal down and right is a fly ball to right, and straight down is a fly ball straight ahead. These results aren't a given either. The timing of your swing may change the direction a little bit. On defense, once the ball is hit, the nearest fielder to the ball will be under your control. If it's a fly ball and you catch it, the batter's out automatically, and if it's a regular shot, you have to tag him out. Press the fire button to throw and move the joystick in the direction of the base you want to throw to. So right is first base, up is second, left is third, and down is home plate. The ball never goes directly to the base though. You always have to take control of the player right away and move him away from the base to catch it, and then bring him back to the base for the tag. It feels awkward and unnatural at first to make this work. You can get used to it, but I think they should have polished up this issue first. It makes for some sloppy baseball. You'd think this was a little league game or something. Another aspect that needed to be fixed is controlling the runners. When you hit the ball, you have to make the batter run. It really should be automatic. Pressing right will always make the runner advance to the next base, left retreats. Of course, you should have control over whether or not you want to push on for a double or stay at first base and whatnot, but the guy should run automatically if he hits the ball, especially if you have another runner to control. It just delays your progress. Even if you hit a home run, you have to send him along the bases manually. It's pretty stupid. If you want to steal a base, press the direction of the base the runner is on while you're up at bat, and the color of the player will change to indicate you have control of him. Unfortunately, this is a strong tip-off to the other player that you're going to be stealing a base. Even if you're bluffing, he's still going to keep an eye on you since the color is different. Another problem is the sound. Whenever you throw a strike or get a batter out, this annoying horn will go off. Couldn't they have picked something better than this? And another minor complaint is that you always have to manually throw the ball back to the catcher between pitches and sometimes even between outs. It's really unnecessary. And so is having to sit through a 30 second sequence of all the players changing sides between innings. Despite all these issues, once you get the hang of the game, it's still relatively playable. It just needed a lot more work in spring training. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crabs.